Good afternoon, Lorena. Thank you very much, Lorena, Emilia, Maimuna, Leilani, uh, Adriana, and all for setting, uh, for, for setting up this specific session on housing. Uh, indeed, as we in Barcelona go through our third week of confinement, the space where we live, our home's design, costs, services, neighborhood is more important than ever because it defines our ability to remain healthy, both physically and mentally. In Spain, the state of emergency was declared by the Spanish government uh, on March 14, uh, and schools, public venues, and other public services were closed, and physical distancing uh, measures were enforced at that time. The, gov the government encouraged voluntary confinement and teleworking when possible. And in Barcelona, the municipal government sent home all non-essential uh, municipal services workers. As the epidemic evolved two days ago on Monday, the Spanish government toughened up the, the state of emergency measures and compulsory confinement was enforced. This means that everyone except essential service providers must now remain home. Throughout the whole crisis, ensuring a shelter for everyone is a priority for the city government. Indeed, as staying home remains the most effective measure against the contagion, the right to adequate housing is clearer than ever, a condition for the right to life. From minute zero of the epidemic in Barcelona, we have been striving to ensure that those who already have a home can remain there regardless of their ability to pay the rent or the mortgage and to guarantee a decent, a decent shelter for vulnerable families and individuals, including homeless populations. We have adopted several measures to this end, but I would like to highlight three of them. First, the City Council successfully called the judiciary to suspend all evictions during the state of emergency. Second, we have approved a moratorium on the collection of rent in the municipal public housing stock, as well as in public owned retail spaces. Public housing rents will further be reduced for tenants suffering from a significant income reduction as a result of the crisis. And for that, we have set an initial budget of 3.5 million euros. Third, we have set up a 6,000 square meters pavilion and reached an agreement with hostels to provide temporary accommodation to over 1,200 homeless persons. In this context, given the complexity and tension in Barcelona's real estate market, reaching partnerships with all actors in the city have proven key to ensure that we implement all measures possible to guarantee the right to housing in these difficult times. Two examples of this are the following. Mm -hmm. well, on one hand, the agreement that we rapidly reach with the Touristic Business Association Apertur, which allows to mobilize 200 touristic apartments uh, to accommodate families being assisted by the city's social services. On the other hand, we have enhanced our partnership with the social sector to mobilize private vacant houses and accommodate families that are in a situation of social emergency. This is done through the Barcelona Rental Housing Pool and Session Program, which already existed, and which is implemented in partnership with Habitat 3 Foundation, a partnership model that was awarded by UN Habitat at the World Urban Forum last February. The measures mentioned are only a sample of action taken by the City Council, and the whole set measures is accessible through the link that we will leave on the chat. So looking forward to the recovery phase, there are a few lessons that we can take from this crisis. First and foremost, we have proved that we can effectively end homelessness. Even if these are temporary solutions, we know now that it is possible and we will work tirelessly to ensure that homeless persons do not get back on the streets once the pandemic is over. For that, we will start working very soon with all administrations, from the regional government to the EU, 
to fund and implement long-term structural housing solutions so as to provide an adequate shelter and social care to homeless people. Second, we, we need to rethink our real estate market to ensure the affordability of housing for all populations, given their essential role in preserving life in context of health and socioeconomic crisis. While this is not solely on our hands as city council, we certainly need to push for solutions that put our people's need at the center rather than those of the market. Third, the almost three weeks that we have been confined home have already shown us that the way we build our houses and apartments does matter. Open spaces, daylight access or energy efficiency are, pro are proving crucial to ensure that we can get through the confinement as healthier as possible. Last but not least, the lockdown is accelerating the importance of a fair digital transition in the economy, but also in how we understand social and economic human rights. If access to digital services shapes our opportunities in the, off in the offline world, then access to internet in cities like Barcelona should probably be introduced as a component of our right to an adequate standard of living and as a feature of how I understand adequate housing, just as water or energy servicing. From now on, we governments should maybe take bridging the digital divide as a human rights obligation that starts at home. Thank you very much.